Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to one of the most popular mods for Age of Empires 2, Roma Ad Bellum, or Rome at War. The Roma Ad Bellum team have just recently released a new update for their mod called Mare Nostrum, which translates to Our Sea. And the Mare Nostrum update is really exciting because it completely overhauls the naval aspect of the game. There are more building options, more military ships, more civilian ships, more tactics and strategies that are possible in Romayad Bellum than even the base game Age of Empires 2 currently offers. It's really exciting what the team has done, and I cannot wait to show it off to you guys. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, what I want to do in this video is show off the tutorial campaign that the team has released alongside the update itself. So you can find that in the mod browser itself. You click into mods and you're gonna look for, go into campaigns here, custom campaign, the Rome at War Naval tutorial. So download that and make sure that when you're in this menu here, you scroll down and you select Rome at War in the data mod. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Episode one, the early antiquity age. First Rome at War Naval Tutorial. Thank you. Glad to be in this two-part campaign, you will learn how to dominate the seas in both the early antiquity and imperial ages. For the first level, you will have to fight your way to the end of the river. Try lose as few ships as possible in the process. Good deal. Warning: that. You must have the Rome at War. So one of the things that even this little selection of slides shows off is how the they have completely overhauled the the naval side, all the way from the very first age called the Iron Age in this mod, up through the Early Antiquity Age, the Middle Antiquity Age, into the Imperial Age. Uh, you're going to see a whole host of new things. Let's go ahead and dive in. To prevent you reaching the end of the river, your enemies have established a series of blockades, which you must destroy. The first blockade is composed of enemy scout galleys. Scout galleys are very weak to almost every unit, but they are very fast and adept as explorers. Okay, so starting off the tutorial right here, we see two different units. I've got on my side in the blue, these are mono reams, which basically are similar to the galleys of default Age of Empires 2. Kind of your uh, generic vanilla unit. They're pretty solid, although they do have some tricks up their sleeves we'll see later. But uh, the Monoreme, it's pretty straightforward. And our first new unit, although you'll notice too, let me not skip over this, the new graphics for all of the naval ships looks beautiful, right? I really love what they've done here. And our opponent in the red has scout galleys. Scout galleys are kind of like a scout cav of the sea. Uh, they're really not the best fighters. They're not very good in most situations. Uh, but there are a couple of strategic opportunities where the scout galley makes sense. And we'll learn more about that later. But for now, let's go ahead and clobber these scouts with our mono rings. <laughs> Focus fire for the win. Nice. Scout galley's down. Mono reams moving on. Gate is made mostly of mono reams. To help you deal with these, your allies have constructed several fire galleys for your navy. Mono reams make good generalist units, but they are vulnerable to fire galleys, which can close the range and begin throwing fire. Fire galleys are also good against many other warships. All right, so we've just found, so now our enemy has their scout galleys, but then they've added in their own mono reams. And so on our side, we've been given fire galleys in response. Here's our early antiquity age fire galley. All right. Notice the flame, I don't, flame pipes up front here. All right, All right so once again, let's go ahead and dive in. And attack. Try to pull back the weak units. We don't want to 
lose them. I want to try to get gold, you know? Gold is nice, so... Let's just keep this. The enemy has made their next blockade primarily of fire galleys. To help you break it, your allies have built a small fleet of Hemiolias. Alright, this is another new unit that we've got here. ...fighting than mono reams, but excel against fire ships and economic units. Mm -hmm. Use them to remove the fire galleys without engaging the mono reams. Okay. So this is a new unit called the Hemiolia. Now, the Hemiolia, as I understand it, is somewhat similar to the Monorine. Let's take a look at the stats. All right, you'll notice the Hemiolia uh, fires a couple of extra projectiles, but otherwise it has the same base damage. Uh, almost one more melee armor, but one less pierce armor. And uh, a little bit less range than the generic uh, Monorine. All right, so the Hemiolia is pretty similar. It does not perform as well generically as the monorine, but it does bonus damage against uh, fishing ships, economic units, and fire galleys. So that's going to be our game plan here, is to try to lure out the fire galleys with the Amelias. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh, I'm going to lose one here. Ah. Uh, I think I probably missed that. Okay, well, that could have been worse. Let's kind of just... I've lost three ships so far. Not terrible, but I don't know if that's going to be gold. Right, we've got, what is this, a fire galley here? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, no, let's move that. Another one down, another one down. Ah, come on. All right. Yeah, that's five ships. Ooh. Instead of making the next blockade out of ships, the enemy has constructed two sea towers. Sea towers are good for coastal defense, especially against naval landings. Mm -hmm. If you destroy them, your allies have loaded up a number of demolition rafts. Not only are demolition rafts effective against naval defenses, they are very strong against naval units when they can get close. Alright, so we've got this new... Well, I say new unit. The Demolition Raft. It's very similar to the demo ship that we already have in the game, right? Although, again, new, beautiful graphics. And I love how in the early Antiquity Age, it's just kind of like a raft with fire. Uh, it's fantastic. It's just great. Because they don't have gunpowder, obviously. So you're actually just sending this, you know, inferno to crash into the enemy ship. But what you do see, which is really important, is the sea tower. Now this is uh, something that we very rarely see in base game AOE 2, mostly just some campaigns and a couple of rare maps. But the sea tower is now a buildable unit, a, a buildable construction in the sea. You might say, Kaiser, how's that possible? Well, we're going to learn more about that later. But you can now build sea towers, and they serve as uh, defenses. And the demo ships... Are pretty effective at taking out these guys. So let's go. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. All right, not bad. Uh, let's do now let's see if. Two, nice. All right, towers are down. We can now move in. <laughs> Here's another really cool, ships, really cool builder uh, unit. You the ship. Although scout galleys are weak in almost every situation, they excel against boarding ships, and as such, your allies have provided several of them. Cool. So here we have the boarding ship, which is basically a naval version of the priest. The boarding ship gets up close to an enemy, uh, an enemy uh, naval unit. And starts converting. And if they're allowed to stay alive long enough, they will actually take over and convert the enemy ship to their side. So, 
one of the cases, one of the times where the scout galley, or the scout ship that we saw earlier, it's an upgraded version, uh, one of the ways in which they are very good is dealing with these monks of the sea boarding ships. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we also have, wait a minute, we have a couple of Hemiolias, and they are going to be weak to the monorings. So, let's get them... One, two, and then you guys go right in. Ah, uh, oh, look at that. They got a conversion off. I'm not even upset about it, because we get to see conversions in action. to stop you. You will be able to choose two more groups of ships to add to your navy. Select the shipyard beside the type okay, of Okay, so we get to train. choose two different ships to add to two different types of ships to add to the navy we currently possess. We've already got uh fire ships, but they're kind of on the weak side. Like this guy right here. I, I don't think he's long for this world. And you too, you're kind of hurting. I think we need more fire ships. We can also pick up some mono reams. We could pick up some demo rafts if we want. Hemiolias are okay, and scout galleys. All right, let's see. What are we dealing with here? Mono ream, Hemiolia. Fire galley. All right, I say we do... Let's do fire galleys. And... Ah, let's try... Let's just go with more mono reams. Now that you have gathered your full navy, it is time to destroy the final enemy obstacle. And we're up against fire galleys and scout ships here. Oh no! No, no, no! I'm letting the demo rafts just crash into me. Don't, don't let, don't let the boarding ship be boarding ship things. All right, looks like we're getting a bronze medal this go round. Congratulations. You have successfully used You think you can do better? Well, complete this mission. Gonna have to download the mod for Push yourself and try it and out. See if you can get the gold. But anyway, that's level 1. And that shows off only a few of the new things that they've added in with Mare Nostrum. You will now have many of the skills required to play both early and middle antiquity age water combat as they are very similar. You only have to play the Imperial Age tutorial and you will be fully equipped to engage in naval combat. Ahead at ramming speed. Cool. Alright. Let's go back to the campaigns and let's try... Stage 2. Now, remember, I, I make this mistake. Every time you have to go to the next save, uh, age, the next stage, pick the Roman War Data mod. Don't forget to do that. So click that. Welcome to the second part of the Rome at War Naval Combat tutorial. In this mission, you will learn how to fight on water in the Imperial Age. You will have to destroy a series of enemy waves in this level. Use the knowledge from the early antiquity mm -hmm. tutorial as a basis for the ships you choose, but you will want to pay attention to the hints and ship selection parts of the campaign as well. Fair winds and smooth sailing. Fantastic. Let's Morning. dive in. In this tutorial, you will have to break your way through waves of enemy onslaughts. You must pick the best counter unit for each wave, in order to succeed. The first enemy attack is made of elite scout galleys. Select a unit from the options in the middle of the map to counter it. Click a ship to see its stat breakdown. Select the shipyard beside it to choose that ship. Okay, so before we start dealing with the waves, uh, one thing I want to highlight that I haven't even talked about yet is um, in regular Romeo ad bellum. They've actually introduced 
two different naval buildings. In AoE 2, you have the dock, right? Well, the dock is gone, and they've been replaced with two different buildings. You have the ports and the shipyards. The ports are it is basically a dock that builds civilian buildings, which is uh, fishing ships and transport ships and... Um, I believe they're called Merchant Ships, which is a rename of the Trade Cog. And uh, the Merchant Ship, again, all, most of these units, I know the Trade Cog does, uh, the, the Merchant Ship, and the uh, the Transport Ship, I believe, as well, both have different, unique, era-appropriate graphics, which are beautiful. And there's also a new civilian ship that is in the port called the Construction Ship. And the Construction Ship can construct not only fishing traps, but also sea walls and sea towers, which is really exciting and I think is an amazing step to transforming the utility and the complexity of water maps. And I cannot wait, if you guys are interested, in showing off some actual 1v1 naval gameplay in Roll Mad Bellum. If you want to see that, leave a comment in the video below. Let me know. Like this video. I want to hear... How excited you guys are about what's going on in this mod. It's really cool. The second building that they have is the shipyard. And the shipyard is the military dock. So it constructs all of the ships that you see here. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at each of them. We can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different ships that are shown off here. And that's not even including several... Uh, I believe there's civilization or cultural unique units. Uh, there are even more things out there than we're seeing in this tutorial. But here we go. This is the late game roster of 10 different unique ships. Now our first foe here is the elite scout ship. Which, as I've already mentioned, is kind of like the scout ship. And we see a little pop up here. The scout ship gives us some stats which are really helpful. Shows us some of their hidden attributes, kind of what they're strong against and sort of thing. And for me, I'm looking at this final window in particular. The scout ship is strong against boarding ships, the priests of the sea, but they're weak against everything else. So I think we can pick just about anything to take these guys on. The trireme. All right, here are the stats. Really nice. Here's some bonus damage that they do. Strong versus elite scout ships. Heavy demo ships. And elite trihemiolias. Oh, by the way, so you'll you'll notice that the we had the mono ream back in the early antiquity age. The mono ream upgrades to the bi ream, and the bi ream upgrades to the tri ream. So mono one, bi two, tri three. Right. Um, if I remember correctly, the ream is how many decks of sailors the ship has. So mono ream is one deck, the bi ream two deck, and now the tri ream is three decks. Let's go ahead and pick tri reams. This should be a pretty easy fight, I think. Trireams versus scout ships. Here we go. Yeah, you can see the, the, these elite. Um, back. Yeah. There we go. Elite scout ships. Not the best. Just like scout cav. You know, really not the strongest units. One on one, mano a mano. Well done on destroying the first enemy blockade. Unfortunately, it is not the last. Okay. The next enemy blockade is made of triremes. Right, we got right triremes this and time. And so we got to figure out, all right, if they're triremes, let's go back to the trireme and figure out what are they strong and weak against. All right, triremes are weak to fast fire ships, boarding ships, and quinquetemes. So let's go ahead and find our fast fire ships. That's these guys right here. Fast fire ship. Da, 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 da. Okay, strong versus... Triremes, as well as a thing called Triremes Ram. Now, you'll notice I skipped a unit. We got the Trireme right here. And then there's this ship called the Trireme in Ram form. Uh, so it's really not a different unit, but in the late game, you unlock an ability for your Trireme to turn it into basically kind of a, a battering ram of the sea. The, the Ram formation gives your trireme a little bit more speed and it gives a melee damage. Now the melee damage is not that strong except for the initial hit like the Custillier it does 100 plus 3 damage. 
right? So there's 100 uh, charge damage that the trireme and ram formation can do uh, that the regular trireme cannot. So it's a pretty cool option. You go in, you ram an enemy ship with your trireme, and then you can either stay in melee damage or switch back over to your ranged formation for the trireme. So it's a pretty cool option for your ships there, and we got to keep that in mind as we move forward. But for taking out these triremes, let's go with the fire ship, the classic. One down. Oh yeah, and you just see the fast fires, they melt through, through these units here. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Very close. The next wave is composed of enemy triremes using their ramming attack. For some civilizations, they have access to an extra technology of the shipyard, which grants them access to ramming mode on their triremes. When in ramming mode, a trireme switches to a weak melee attack. However, it charges a massive ramming attack bonus every 50 seconds, which can devastate enemy right. fleets. So again, a Custilier-like upgrade for the trireme. I think what we're going to try, let's, let's look at the trireme and ram formation again. They're weak to fast fire ships. Which I think is true in mass, but they have six ramming ships, and we're going to spawn five fire galleys if we do them. So I actually think they might have the edge on us if we go with the fire ships. Boarding ships, similarly, that's kind of a tough situation. Um, I think they would blow us up with that initial Custilier hit. The, the number's too high. The heavy demo ships, though, that's an option. That is an option. Um, what I'm interested in trying, let me see something here. What they don't mention are the, I'm going to, I'm actually going to save this real quick. Save the game. Yeah. And let's try out this new unit, the Quin Karim. The Quin Karim is a, it's a different unit. It's not an upgrade to the Trireme, but it is a unit that is a very, very strong unit. You need to unlock the Romeoad Bellum equivalent to chemistry called um, Advanced Weaponry, if I remember correctly, uh, in order to get access to this unit. But it is a very, very strong unit. I think it'll be good in, our, in this fight. So let's pick them. So they got off their, uh, their charge attacks, and I lost more ships than I wanted to. I think if I, I could have played that better. Uh, but the good news is, after losing two ships, they kind of melted the rest just fine. So for their next blockade, the enemy has assembled several fast. And what you notice with the Quinkareems, they're firing off salvos of you know missiles. So they they do a very good job at kind of cutting through waves of enemy units. All right, the fast fires. Let's take a look at the fast fire ship. They're weak to heavy demo ships and elite trihemiolias. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. No, no. Oh man, you, you try so much and it's just all right. One down. One ship's not terrible. The next enemy blockade is very explosive. Their heavy demolition ships will be destroyed when they attack, but have the potential to wipe demo out the entire fleet. So the demo ship enough. is weak to triremes and quinkareems. Let's definitely go with the quinkareem on that one. No, I picked the wrong unit. No. Okay, we, we've, we've made a mistake here. Uh, we lost. Wow, that was a mistake. We did get to see a sneak preview at another extremely cool, uh, an extremely cool unit, which I think we might show off here as well. So this is our foe here, the Trihemiolia, right? The Trihemiolia, where are you? Yeah, here we go. They are... The Trihemiolia is the, again, it's the elite version of the, what was it, the Hemiolia I think we saw back in the last stage. So this is the variant of the Trireme, the Monoreme line. 
that is particularly suited for raiding, taking out uh, scout ships, fire ships, and eco units like fishing ships, right? So that's their function. They are weak to Quinkareams, but I think we can try the Elite Juggernaut. The Juggernaut is a unit we're going to see in a little bit that's very, very cool. It also has two different modes of attack. You can either use it like a cannon galleon, and it's shooting off uh, missiles at buildings. Or you can switch it to a kind of mangonel onager form, and it will absolutely decimate waves of enemy naval units. And I think this may be one of the most important units added into the mod, because it forces you to move away from just massing galleys and throwing them at your opponent. Now, if you're not careful, the enemy can respond with juggernauts and this huge investment. It's kind of like archers on land. The huge investment uh, of massed units that you put up uh, can be dealt with. And now you've got to actually think about what unit should I pick in what situation. Uh, I really like the juggernaut. Let's go ahead and check them out. Here we go. Quickly, we switch over to, again, Manganel form. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Easy. Nice. The next enemy blockade is composed of boarding ships. All right, these are our priest units here. Your All right, so let's take a look at the priests. Been researched instead of being the boarding ship. The ship will be sunk. They are weak to elite scout ships and heavy demo ships. Well, we don't get a lot of opportunities to say, yes, this is the moment for the scout ship to shine. This is, we want the scout ship to wage war here. So let's go ahead and pick these guys. Whoa, 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 wait. Alright, we did it. Good job. Didn't lose a thing. The next blockade is made up of elite juggernauts. Juggernauts have two attack modes they can use. A long-range anti-building attack and a shorter range Right, so the juggernauts attack. have already shown the off. And fortunately for us, the juggernauts are going to be in... Uh, kind of their long range. Well, actually, wait a minute. Ah, the the, the front three are, are in onager mode, barrage mode. The back three are in their cannon galleon long range mode. So, for the fun of it, let's try the boarding ship. All right. Now, let's pause real quick. One, two, and three. Yes. Let's take our first ship and right-click number one here. Take our second ship and right-click number two. Our third ship can right-click number three. Fourth ship can go over there, and the fifth ship can go here. Let's see how well this works. Whoa. And whoa, whoa, whoa! It's, are you actually converting? Now you'll notice, just like, uh, here we go, yeah, they're kind of stuck now because we've got them surrounded. Um, you'll notice, just like regular priests, they do have a charge. We don't see a, a meter over their heads like with the monks, but you do see a faith build up here in the bottom, or let's call this maybe boarding strength. But there we go, we can now convert. And because they have redemption... So this is the Imperial Age. Because they have redemption, the ships are just blowing up. Uh, or not redemption, but uh, heresy. They've got heresy unlocked, so the ships are just dying. Otherwise, they would uh, they would convert to our side. Uh, which I think we saw in the previous video, or the previous stage, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, Quinn Kareems. These guys are tough. This is a hard fight. Um... The Queen Kareem, let's take a look. They're weak to fast fire ships and boarding ships. Let me... Again, I'm going to save. And let's try fire ships. I think that's the best choice here. I've already lost six ships. I think we have to lose another one here. This is really, really tough. Uh, da, da, da. Ooh, ooh, we actually did it. Uh, yeah, there, there we go. Ship down, ship down. Yeah, looks like we're not getting gold this time either. 
Oh no. Oh, we lose the wave. Unable to defeat this wave of Ouch. Losing all of your the quink reams are very, very strong. And you'll notice, I mean, even, even to the units that are weak against, quink reams are very, very strong units. So um, I'm sure that the, the stats of the ships they're going to be looking at over time as people get to play the ships more and more. But um, quink reams, they're, they're tough. All right, here we go. Octeres. Uh, ooh, the Octeres. Let's take a look at, look at these guys. They are strong versus coastal defenses and ships at a very long range. This is the ultimate. This is the trebuchet of the sea. An extremely strong unit against buildings. Uh, and not bad against ships if they stand there and take the damage. Right? Uh, but if you get up close into their business, uh, Octaries do not do well. So actually, in this case, uh, I think it would be fun to use the boarding ship again. Let's go. Yep, you'll notice they can't really do anything. And here we go. Look at the animation, by the way. We actually see the boarding ladders go up. The boarding ramps. Instead of ships, the next challenge is an enemy fort blocking the river. For this, you will need to select an effective seed ship mm -hmm. in order to destroy it from And range. guess what? We've already seen the juggernaut, and it would be fun to show... Oh, here we go. I'm sorry, the juggernaut. We've already seen the Juggernaut uh, in the Onager mode. It would be cool to show them off in the uh, in the long range mode, but I think we all really want to see the Octaris in action. So let's go ahead and pick them. Boom, boom. 300 damage to an enemy fort or a castle, if you will. 300 damage with every shot. And that's only from two ships. You know, see, this thing is just getting melted. You can imagine if you were able to mass up a couple of these, you can wreak havoc on a map like Islands, Migration. Romea Bellum has changed the game on what naval maps look like in Age of Empires 2. And it is really, really exciting. I cannot wait to see this mod actually played in a multiplayer competitive scenario in action. That's going to be a lot of fun. Fort down. Moving on. The enemy has one final obstacle for you to overcome. To fight this massive fleet, you will be able to train three types of ships for your final battle. All right, we got to choose from three different units. They've got fire ships, triremes, and octeres, as well as a couple of sea towers. So I think our best bets are. I think we want we want quinquereems. We want Juggernauts, and we want... Maybe Fire Ships. Let's try them. Uh, the Juggernauts have put them in honor. And get in there. Looks like we're not getting... Looks like we're going back to bronze again. Ah, uh, nice. You gotta love it. Alright. Oh! Ship down. Okay. Now let's take our juggernauts. We already kind of wiped out the, the... The massive ships. Oh no, we've only got one juggernaut left? Okay, well here we go. We've got him now in long range mode, and we can see just shy of 200 damage with every shot here against the sea tower. I've lost 18. I need to lose less than 25 to get bronze. For the fun of it, let's go ahead and throw our, our ships at the sea tower and see how much damage they do. Yeah, one ship is really not doing a lot to Quink Ream here. Boom. There it is. Well done. You have successfully destroyed the final enemy wave. With the knowledge you have learned from this tutorial, you will now be able to harness the power of a successful navy. Hoist the sails and assemble your fleet. Aye aye, mateys. There we go. 
You are victorious. And that is the tutorial showing off not even all now. of the unique not ships that they've added into the game. Land. When the need arises, um, you can take to the seas and emerge yeah, that's, victorious. that's fantastic. Just the, the Assemble your fleet, here. man the oars, and set, set the, the sails. sails. The, seas the seas of Rome at war await. await. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, cheat codes. We, I don't know why it says... Oh, that, I guess I've got them enabled, but anyway. All right. So that's the tutorial campaign. Again, they've not even shown off everything they put in. So we did not get to see the construction ship at all. We didn't get to see seawalls used. We got to see a couple of sea towers, but um, several... I, I know of at least one civilization in the mod that currently has a unique naval building that's available. I know of at least one or two civilizations that have unique ships, unique unit ships that have been added in with the mod. So we haven't even seen everything that Rome Ad Bellum has added in in this campaign. This is just the basics. But even looking at, at this, you can see the foundation for a great degree of strategic and tactical complexity that the mod has added in, which is absolutely fantastic. I love it, and I cannot wait to see it in action, player versus player. It's fantastic. Um, so guys, if you are ex as excited as I am, let me know in the comments below. I, I really do want to hear from you guys how much uh, you want to see more from Romeo Ad Bellum. You want to see more of this kind of naval combat, and just seeing where the mod goes from here in the naval sphere. It's really, really exciting. Um, I think that even at the base game, there's room for a lot more exploration of what's possible on the naval side. Uh, if there was anything about the base Age of Empires 2 experience that I would say, yeah, we could push the envelope and go a lot further than we currently are at, it's on the naval side. And I think that Romad Bellum is really showing off maybe the way that they should go. Uh, but certainly a really exciting development for the mod and uh, you know a possible path for Age of Empires 2. Guys, uh, I really love this mod. I love what they're doing. If you like it too, like the video. Let me know in the comments below. Check out the mod. I've got the links in the description below. Thanks guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser signing off. Have a great one.